So I've got a tutorial video here in CapCut. I actually have two videos. I have the video clip here in my screen recording, which is actually CapCut as well. And it's where I'm showing how to do something in CapCut. And then I have the video clip of my ugly mug. And I'd like to stay on screen with whoever's watching so that, you know, I haven't left you. I'm still there. I'm not AI and we can hang out together. But looking like this, I'd be covering the whole screen. If I take the video of me and put it over top here, see it covers up the whole thing. Now I can make it smaller, but it's still pretty ugly and going to take up a lot more space than it needs to. So let me undo. I control Z, it's my favorite keyboard shortcut, control Z to undo. There's a couple of ways that we can approach this. One is I'd be happy if I could take this and just get rid of this whole background and then shrink myself down and be on there. So let's try that first. With the clip of me selected, I'll come up here to video in the properties panel and I'll go over to remove BG and I'll click auto removal. It takes it a few seconds and then it has cut me out. Now that's looking pretty good. I like that, but you need to scan through when you do this because sometimes it'll leave little artifacts here and there. And I see I've got some problems here with my chair as usual. One thing I can do is I can switch over to custom removal. Now this is a pro feature. It's only available in the CapCut Pro subscription. But if you have that, click the smart brush here. The size is at 20, that's good for now. And I can come and paint over with my smart brush what I wanna keep in this video. So I'll just come run it over top of myself there. This is a smart brush, so you don't have to be perfect with this by any means. It's gonna try and figure it out from what you've highlight it and we're way off there but no problem i can grab this other smart brush here which is a smart eraser and i can come back through and say no uh this stuff all needs to go and i'll just go around my head and back down in here the chair is always going to be a problem we're getting somewhere now so i can just click on here and make this go away i can come in a little closer that's looking pretty good. Now I need to get rid of all this on the side. Somehow it left a spot up top. That's unusual. I have a little fleck up there still. There we go. All right, that's looking better, but I do need to add back in a few things. Like the rest of my ear, I think I'd like to have that. Having a whole ear is usually a good thing. And we'll come get the rest of my arm here that I sort of cut off. And when you're using the smart brush, like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. Even what you see here, when it actually applies, when you hit this apply button, it's actually going to be a little bit different. It's going to fine tune itself even more. Nonetheless, I'll use the eraser and get rid of this little extra up there. And I got a little weird thing going on down here. You can use a smaller brush if you want to get into finer detail. And if you want to erase something without using a smart brush, you can come just get the fixed eraser. Now that's not smart at all. It's not going to be aware of its surroundings and figure out what you meant. It's going to say, you want this erased? I'm erasing it. So that's kind of a last resort. I think we might be okay with this. So we're going to hit apply and we're going to go through and see what this looks like. All right, it looks like it's doing a lot better with getting rid of the chair and figuring out where I am but it didn't do so well getting rid of the chair up here between my ear and my head. Now, let me tell you, this is all about lighting. If your lighting is right, these background removers work a lot better. The auto remover works most of the time if I've got the right lighting and I've got good separation between what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. Lighting, of course, helps the camera and the AI see what's what, what belongs to the thing you want to keep and what belongs to the thing you don't want to keep. And you can tell on this side of me, we've got a lot of shadows going on. I didn't light that very well. That's okay. I could keep going with this, with the smart eraser. I could come back and I could bring the size down and could do some more little detail removals here and try to get this right. But it's going to take a little bit more fooling with to get that done. And if I don't want to spend the time doing that, I've got another option that I'll be perfectly happy with. And to do that, we're going to get rid of this custom removal. The auto removal already went off when we switched to custom removal. I'm going to come over here right next to remove BG to mask. Now make sure that I've got the clip of me selected. I'm going to click mask and I'm going to check the box to turn it on. And then I've got options. I can do a horizontal mask. I can do a mirror. I can do a circle, which is what we're going to do. You also have a rectangle, a heart or a star. Uh, hearts and stars don't seem like me. So I'm going to go with circle. 
Now right off where this landed is not really working. It's got half of my face and my face is way too big and nobody wants that. So we're gonna do a couple things. One is I'm gonna drag this out and make it a little bit bigger. We're gonna shrink the whole thing later. But right now I'm just gonna make the mask a little bit bigger. I'm gonna slide it over and let's go a little bit bigger than that. I don't wanna make my mask bigger than the actual video size is or I'll end up with this flat part somewhere like at the top. I don't wanna do that. So I'll go right about there. And we can move this around to center the person within it. I'll go right about there so that my eyes that are about center level. And I do want to leave a little bit of room on either side because I end up moving around when I'm making videos. I don't realize I'm doing it, but somehow I end up moving around so I could end up not quite in this mask centered at some point. I could go to the right or the left. And I just want to make sure that I don't have it in such a position, have it so tight on my face that anytime I move, I'm going to go completely out of the circle and not be visible anymore. Now we want to make this a lot smaller because I'm taking up way too much of this thing. So to make that happen, I'm going to click basic, which brings me back to here where I can scale it down and I can either use this scale slider or I can just grab the handles here and drag them in until I get the size that I want. Then I can move myself wherever I think is the best place that I'm going to be out of the way. I might even go a little bit smaller and come over here toward this corner and that's looking pretty good to me. Well, as good as I can look, but it's missing something here. I usually like to have a border, an outline, a stroke, a circle around myself in the circle. There's not a direct way to do that in CapCut. You can't just select it and pick video properties that say put a stroke on this or put an outline or a border. You have those options in text, but you don't have those options with a video clip. But there's some workarounds. So let's go over to stickers. I'm just going to type in circle in the search and I'm going to try and find a good circle here that has some kind of color. So maybe we'll use this yellow one. I'm going to click the plus button to add it on. I'll drag it over so that it starts when I start and I will drag this end out so that it ends when I end. Now that's way too big. We need to make it a lot smaller. Grab the handle and shrink it down till it's about where I want to be. And right now it's over top of the me circle. That's okay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so it's easier to work with. I need to get this behind the me. So we'll just click on it. I'm going to drag it down. I don't know why I ended up with so many tracks. I've done a lot of different things in this particular project that are unrelated. So I'll just just drop it in there. I've still got it selected. Grab one of these corner handles and we'll move it right about there is probably good. If you need to fine tune that position, these little up down arrows are pretty good for that for your X and Y position. Y being up and down and X being left and right. And let's go ahead and zoom this back out so we can see what we ended up with. There we ended up with a little border around us. Now it's yellow and stickers, you can't just change the color on a sticker. So what we can do is we can go to our little sticker here. That's the yellow ring that we made. We can right click on that and say create compound clip. Now that it's a compound clip, we get some more options up here in the properties panel. The one that we want is adjustment. It's not that you can select the exact color that you want, like from a palette or by putting in the hex ID, but we can slide the temperature over, change the tint, change the saturation, and we can end up with some different colors than what we started with. And then we might find something that'll work for us. You can also work with the exposure and the contrast and all these other options. Just fiddle with these slot. Ooh, that took the whole thing. We don't want to do that. Fiddle with these sliders until you end up with what you're looking for. Now you might ask, hey, I've seen a lot of tutorial videos where people have these like neon rings where the light chases itself all the way around the ring as the person in the circle is down there talking. How do I do that in CapCut? Well, there isn't a built-in feature for that, but we've got a way to do it. So let's get rid of our yellow circle here and let's go over to stickers again. This is where all the graphics things live. I'm going to say neon circle and we're going to pick this first fella right here. I'm going to add that as a track. I'm going to bring it down and I'm going to put it right underneath of me and then I'll drag it over to the edge. Make sure it's covering the whole time that I'm on. You're saying, but Bob, I'm not crazy about those colors and the thing isn't moving like you said it would. It's not rotating and colors chasing. Well, just hang on. We're going to get there. So to make it rotate, we're going to come all the way over to where it starts. The very first frame. We're going to come over here next to rotate and we're going to click the add keyframe. 
and we're going to leave it right where it is at zero degrees. Then we're going to come all the way over to the last frame. And we're going to click that keyframe next to rotate as well. And this time we're going to change that though to 359 degrees. Let's go back and play through. And if you notice there, it's spinning right around. It looks like those colors are chasing each other. It's going too slow for you. We can speed that up. Open that up a little bit so it's easier to grab my keyframe. I can move that down. Maybe we want to go about halfway with it. And then I'll just shorten the clip up until it ends right on that keyframe. Now CapCut does not have an inbuilt loop function. So what we can do there is we can just grab this thing and make a copy of it. I'll use Control C come over next to it and control V and then drag that right up next to it. Let's see how it plays through now that we've shortened its time in half to get from zero to 359 degrees. And the reason that I chose 359 degrees instead of 360 is so that it would have one degree of difference so that it hopefully wouldn't stutter when it transitions from one clip to the copy of the clip. Now let's deal with these colors. Of course, as a sticker, there's not a whole lot that we can do, but we know if we turn it into a compound clip, we'll get some options. So I'm selecting both of those, create compound clip. Then I'm gonna come over here and I wanna be on this adjustments tab. If you're not by default there, if you're back on video or something like that, it's all the way over on the right, click adjustment, and then we can come down to our colors and we can change the temperature, the tint and the saturation. Those are gonna be our, our best options here. Move that over, I'm already liking that better. can make that more on the purpley side. We can slide the tint over here toward the green. Let's see, we can saturate this up. Oh yeah, that's looking really nice. Now what if we have that up and turn the temperature down? Oh, okay, we're getting somewhere that works for me. And let's go tint again. Okay, so to the right, it's more of a pinky and to the left, it gets me more orangey. You know, I like orange. So we'll go that direction. We can get rid of most of the glow by bringing that exposure down just a teensy teensy bit. That's pretty cool. Contrast seems to affect things way beyond the uh, ring, the circle that we want to deal with. So we'll skip that. Let's give back some of that exposure there. I think we're going to leave that at zero right where it was. All right, so now let's work on putting this behind our circle and see what we end up with. So make sure I've got it selected, bring it down, scale it down by grabbing this little white circle on the corner. I think we need to zoom in a little bit to get this right. So we'll take this up. Now, once you've zoomed in on your preview window here in CapCut and you can't see what you are trying to work on anymore, look at this little green box within this gray box. This gray box represents your preview window and the green shows you where you're zoomed into now. But you get your little hand automatically so you can grab your green box and move it down and say, this is what I want to be looking at. So now it has taken us to the bottom right corner where the thing is we want to deal with. So we've got our circle over our circle and let's just fine tune that. And I think that is going to work just fine. Now, the reason we put this circle behind the me circle is because if we put it on top, we would end up with that glow coming into the inside. If that's what you're looking for, that is perfectly fine. Go right ahead. I prefer to put it behind that way. If I use a solid circle, it doesn't matter like we did with the yellow one. Or if I use something like this that has a glow coming to the inside, I can cover that up with the me circle. Let's bring this back out to normal size. Deselect everything here and let's play and see. Well, I already see I need to get rid of this black spot. I don't need that on there. So I just come in a couple of frames until I appear. I'm gonna zoom in on my timeline, bring that in, and I'll want that to come in there. So let's pop that in. Is our circle moving? Is the light chasing? It sure is. I like the speed of that. It's not overly distracting. I could deal with it being a little slower, frankly, but uh, I think that's just fine. So there are some ways when you're making your tutorial videos in CapCut to put yourself on screen, either by removing your background or by creating a circle and even the, the neon light chasing circle. If there's anything else that you'd like to know how to do in CapCut or any other creator tool, please let me know in the comments. I'm always interested in ideas for new videos that are sure to be what you're looking for. If you don't have CapCut yet, there's a link in the description. It is an affiliate link, which means I may receive a small commission 
if you end up purchasing something. You don't have to. Hey, go try the free. It might do everything you need. And I certainly appreciate it when folks do use my affiliate links. If you want to keep going exploring with me, watch this video right here.